building more on the concepts of heat transfer. This lecture is going to talk about the difference between sensible, latent, and specific heat. We see in the background here this composite image, this is a GIF, runs over short time periods. We can look at the most recent uh, GIF that shows uh, water vapor uh, content and how that is cycling through the atmosphere. So we're going to talk a little bit about how these are all tied to water vapor and the change of states of water. And when we talk about these different, some of these different types of heat. And so when we're talking about heat, I'll do get us in the mood a song uh, that tied to that would be Some Like It Hot by Robert Palmer. So again, this brings us back to a few lessons ago talking about this idea and concept of heat transfer and talked about, at least briefly brought up, you know, th having three different processes of heat transfer, so radiation, convection, and advection, which can be broken apart, uh, and conduction. So just to re review all those, so conduction, being this mo molecule to molecule transfer of heat energy really um, uh, by in diffusing through a substance, so that being really uh, tied to solid objects, um, so heat flowing from relatively high to low temperature. Um, then convection and advection being uh, fluids and energy transferred by either vertical movement with convection or uh, generally more horizontal movement by advection. And then radiation, as we've already talked about, uh, is an, with energy traveling through air or space. So we see on the right here, this example showing some different options, different examples. So conduction would be that actual heating itself of the, of the pot here. The convection would be uh, the, uh, the fluid within it. So in this case, water, you know, moving around and convecting, being transferred largely probably by vertical movement here, but also could be some advection. And then radiation coming off of that uh, pot as it is heated as well. Um, but again, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on these other ones, parts the conduction, convection, advection that we haven't talked about as much are going to be more relevant here than radiation that we've already spent quite a bit of time talking about. So when we go to each of these in turn, uh, the sensible heat versus the latent heat versus the specific heat, we're going to make sure that we keep them all separate. So and if you can once again bring back this image that we have seen here in the past, and noting off of the bottom here, so this one component here that I already had talked about, a little bit of latent heat, and also has this conduction part um, tied to sensible heating. So sensible heating is referring to energy that simply is going to increase the temperature of some matter. Um, you know, whether that's water, whether that is the pot that we saw, the metal pot that we saw in the last example, um, you know, any matter that's being warmed or cooled, and, you know, in another case actually, energy that's going to change temperature um, is sensible heating or sensible cooling if it's you know, seeing a decrease in temperature. So again, that's simply referring to concept of temperature as we might think of it. So it is sensible. We you know, have a you know, thermometer, for example, to sense it, to be able to de detect it. Um, contrast that to latent heat, which literally means hidden heat. Um, and it's really meant to invoke this idea of energy that is being used to convert a state of matter. So we'll look at that more in, in some coming slides. But an example would be changing liquid water to water vapor. That would be heat, latent heating, or we might have latent cooling of water vapor going back to liquid water, for example. So again, there's a change of state, and we want to make sure that with latent heating to note that there is no temperature change associated with that. Um, it's simply a change of conversion of state of that matter. There's no temperature change with that. If there's any temperature change, that goes into uh, that sensible heating. So that's our sensible versus latent heat. And we'll also throw in a third concept that has a heat tied to it, so this a concept of specific heat. We want to note that is the amount of energy that is required to change that matter, whatever it may be, by a set temperature. And so we will come back a little bit more to this in some future lessons as well. But for now, we can note that on kind of a scale or spectrum, water has a very relatively high specific heat where oftentimes a lot of other surfaces, metals, for example, and land surfaces, relatively have a much lower specific heat. So it basically what that means is it takes a lot more energy coming into water to increase its temperature, or conversely, a lot of um, energy that needs to be taken out or released by the water um, or any form of water that water's in to cool it, while land generally heats up or cools off a lot more quickly because it takes a lot less energy 
uh, coming in or, go, or being released to warm or cool it. So the focus here, once again, on sensible and latent heat. Um, you know, some key components here. We're going to be talking about this with water. So just to change water from one state to another, we need, once again, heat must either be absorbed or released. And to note that essentially the heat uh, with latent heat must be enough to break the hydrogen bonds when going from, such as when going to higher states, energy states, so from ice to water or from water to water vapor, um, knowing that water is H2O, so two hydrogen uh, atoms and one oxygen atom. Um, we want to break it down to its chemistry here, but you know, we're not going to focus too much on that. Just to note, as we can see then in this image that I've created for us, um, we can move um, from the left to the right and then back around again, where, for example, if we were to start with ice, you know, it can be any temperature below zero degrees Celsius, and you know, generally it takes one calorie of energy, um, that's again a kind of a physics term, um, you know, an amount of energy to go into it, so one calorie of energy to increase um, our any form of water by one degree Celsius. So, for example, if we were at negative five degrees Celsius ice, and we want to go to zero degrees Celsius ice, that would take five calories of input energy. I'm going to changing that uh, up to zero degrees Celsius. So then once we're at that zero degrees Celsius, we can have that change of state in that latent heat of melting, in this case, we're moving from ice to water, um, and that would take 80 calories of energy. And again, in that process, there is no temperature change. We simply go from zero degree ice to zero degree water. Then we can see here on our, again, moving up further on our water, um, we could go from zero degrees Celsius all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius, so that would take 100 calories of energy being absorbed. and but then we get to the 100 degrees Celsius water that we want, that if it's going to can be converted to water vapor, must go through this process of latent heat of evaporation, and that's going to require 540 calories of energy to be absorbed. So quite a lot more than that, even that 100 that it took to get from zero degrees to 100 degrees Celsius. So this is, so this is part of the reason why, you know, if you put quite a bit of water on your stove to boil, it actually you know takes quite a while for it to really get to a roiling boil because you, know, you really need lots and lots of energy to be um, being input to, uh, again, get that energy to be, or that water to be vaporized. And so once again, once you get above that, um, you can have, uh, you know, in theory, water vapor that is greater than 100 degrees Celsius, and that would again, continue on the same idea of abs absorbing more energy. Um, but generally also, uh, then we can move kind of in the opposite direction in the same type of way. So again, 500 540 calories uh, now to be released from water vapor uh, to uh, become back to liquid water um, with this latent heat and condensation. Again, we could cool that water, um, and that would be releasing uh, energy once again from zero, 100 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius, again, would be 100 calories of energy released. And then similarly, we have down here at our latent heat of freezing, um, having that 80 calories released once again to turn from water to ice. So again, key point, once again, to simply emphasize is we, you know, uh, anywhere uh, where we have these latent uh, heat components that we just looked at, and where we're changing a state, and we're not changing temperature, otherwise, um, you know, we have that sensible heating, we're actually changing temperature uh, within, you know, and keeping within that same state. So, some examples um, in trying to figure out what is sensible heat and what is latent heat. So if we were to take an example of a lake, you're out on a lake and you know the sun is coming in and the water is absorbing that incoming solar radiation and then it is increasing the temperature of that lake, are we looking at sensible or latent heat? Similarly, if water, if that energy is coming in, it's being used to evaporate water off of that surface, is that sensible or latent heat? So if you take a second here, you think about it. We just went through this uh, the extensive examples. Hopefully, you're able. To, you can say, okay, yep, I know that for the first example, we would be looking at sensible heat, and for that second example, we would be looking at latent heat because in the first example, we're changing its temperature. We can sense that. We have a thermometer. We can detect the change in temperature. Whereas in the second example, we're changing its state, um, and so you know there was no temperature change along with that. 
you simply change its state, and so that energy that was required was uh, latent or hidden, not detectable by your thermometer, for example. So, um, continuing to tie this in, I guess some other things we've already talked about is with water vapor. We've already reviewed a little bit how that's a greenhouse gas. Uh, note also, that, again, because um, you know this, it's an important uh, greenhouse gas in the atmosphere because water can absorb long outgoing long wave radiation which generally leads to net surface warming but it also can reflect insulation or that incoming short wave radiation which can lead to surface cooling so we saw in some previous ex um, examples of images that I've shown you how quite there's quite a bit of percentage of reflection off of clouds uh, from that short wave incoming reflection but also then uh, you know, quite a bit of what is the re radiation of long wave radiation um, within Earth's atmosphere is also coming from uh, clouds. And so this is an example that we'll get to in later as well. Um, why, for example, in, in Eugene, oftentimes if you if you really notice, um, and this is more prevalent, especially in the winter months, or kind of late fall, winter, early spring, where oftentimes actually the nights that end up maintaining a warmer temperature overnight are the nights that have a lot more clouds and or rain compared to the nights that are clear, oftentimes are much colder because energy is able to escape much more out and is not held in uh, or maintained, re-radiated re by those clouds. So with water vapor, you should note that it's really never uniform in its distribution. Across Earth, it's rapidly changing. We're kind of at, always at some um, fluctuation around what we could call an Earth equilibrium or relatively steady state of how much um, water vapor is in the air. Again, as I showed you at the beginning of to open up this lecture at this example here um, with this link that you could go to um, some, you know, this maintained by the University of Wisconsin. You can go and you can watch a short GIF here. Uh, so for example, and I can play the video here and it shows you going through um, how, how over, I think this is over a span of a day or two. Um, and if I play that again here, you can watch how this animation plays out. And you get to see where water vapor um, is coming in you know, and moving around Earth's whole surface. And finally, then, to wrap up with, um, here's another series of GIFs that are running, we'll start running for you. Um, so to look at global specific and latent heat, um, so I also have the link provided here of where to go for that, as you'll be wanting to, and this will be part of what you'll be using uh, for this week's lab, uh, this module's lab. So um, you'll be tying this in as well and looking at patterns of this and trying to explain back to its physical pro principles a little bit that we've talked through in this uh, lecture, why we're seeing this distribution over the course of a year.